I will demonstrate the recovery of a dislocated IOL after a posterior capsular rupture. You can see that a one piece IOL is dislocated. I inject first viscoelastics to inflate the interior chamber. The IOL is located behind the interior capsule. The next step is the examination of the lens capsule, especially the interior capsule. You can see that there's a rift at 9 o'clock otherwise the interior capsule is stable. The next step is to luxate the IOL into the sulcus or even more safely into the interior chamber on top of the iris. I will insert now a 25 gauge trocar at 9 o'clock, 4 mm behind the limbus. It is much easier to luxate the IOL from this position into the sulcus or into your chamber because you can work from behind the IOL The inferior haptic is stuck inside the posterior capsule and a bit tricky to loosen. Now both haptics are located inside the sulcus. The IOL can be centered. Try to avoid that a haptic is located on the rift at 9 o'clock. Double check that the haptics are located inside the sulcus. The next step is the insertion of an interior chamber maintainer. You can also use a irrigation handpiece. And then, of course, a, an interior retractomy is performed, as you can see from pass plana, which is much easier than from the limbus. Um, be cautious that you always see the tip of the vitreous cutter. So move it along the edge of the pupil and you are safe not to destroy any structures inside the eye. Be aware that the opening of the vitreous cutter looks downwards, 
not upwards. The opening of the vitreous cutter should look downwards. The next step is of course the removal of viscoelastics. Hydration of the person teases, and of course the final step is the removal of the trocar. Use a trocar forceps or a, an anatomic forceps to remove the trocar, and then compress the sclerotomy with the anatomic forceps in order to close the sclerotomy and the surgery is finished. Thank you very much.